Hi, good morning and welcome to Chicano Studies. Uh, this is the fall semester 2020 and this class is for Kearney High School students um, who are taking a college class at San Diego Mesa College. So welcome to Mesa College. Uh, if this is your first college class, then welcome to college. Um, this is a big leap that you're taking and I hope to help you through it. Um, I can teach you ways to be a, su a successful college student and to actually get the most out of it and, and learn and transform as an individual. Um, especially in Chicano studies, um, I love the field that I teach in and I'm really excited to get you all involved in, in these topics and in the history of Chicanos. Um, and so yeah, this will be that, that class for you. So this class is called um, Chicano Studies 110A, Introduction to Chicano Studies. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to share this video with you all and share the syllabus and what we will be learning. Um, then I'll go into some of the class procedures for this class and how to take it online. Um, and then I will give you just a short uh, introduction into what we're doing this week and what we're learning. Um, so this video will take about 15 to 20 minutes. So go ahead and take out a sheet of paper and take some notes throughout the video. That way you don't have to go back and replay it again. Um, for every video that I upload, I recommend taking out a sheet of paper and taking some notes. So go ahead and do that and I'm going to share the syllabus with you. Okay, so this is our syllabus. Um, a syllabus is a, uh, just a map, a plan of what we're going to be doing this semester. So this class runs from now until December 18th. So it is a one semester class. And so um, what we do from now until December 18th will, will tell us what you've learned and also what grade to give you that will go on your college transcript in the future. Um, so a syllabus is a map of where we're going and it's also a contract um, between you and I uh, that shares what, what we agree to do moving forward and how we agree to conduct ourselves in the classroom. Um, so please take this document very seriously and uh, learn it inside out as best you can. So the first page of the syllabus usually tells you information about the class, what it's called, where and when it will take place. For us, this class will be 100% online and what that means is that we won't be having any Zoom classes. Um, all work is meant to be done at your own pace, uh, independently on your own schedule. And so that can be a little tricky for those who like structure. So I recommend uh, you know, planning ahead of time and creating your own schedule. We can do that um, together next week as well. Um, here's my contact information. This email is the best way to get a hold of me the quickest, um, right here under my name. Um, my name is Professor Jennifer Frost Moreno, um, but you can call me Professor Moreno. Uh, I've been teaching at San Diego Mesa College for a few years now, and uh, I'll share a little bit with you about me uh, as we move on. So I do have office hours for this class. And what that means is that you can go into my Zoom meeting room on Mondays between 2.30 and 3.30 in order to talk to me live about anything uh, regarding the class. And uh, this is the same time as my other classes. So you may run into other co college students, but I recommend uh, coming to office hours to check in or get clarification on anything that you may need to. Okay, so I'll just read the official description for this class, uh, and that way we can start to share what you'll be learning in this class. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Okay, this course is an introductory survey of the field of Chicana and Chicano studies and the factors that influence uh, Chicano culture. Emphasis is placed on the historical development of their Chicano people, including uh, Mesoamerican roots, cultural identification, political activities, 
and their contemporary roles and influence in United States culture, society, and economy. Um, so this course is designed for students majoring in Chicano studies and or social sciences and all students interested in Chicano culture. So all that to say that we're going to be learning a lot about what the word Chicano is and uh, you know where Chicanos come from, what the history is. Um, this class is rooted in uh, history and culture and politics of the United States. So um, while we will be taking a step back and looking globally at some issues, the majority of this class is focused uh, in the United States and what's going on here in the United States. Um, but this class is for anyone who's interested in learning about a different culture, learning about race, ethnicity, um, power, institutions. Um, I'm very much interested in all of those things um, and particularly identity and how people identify and you know, move through, through the world, particularly as oppressed or marginalized people. So this class is for anyone who wants to learn more about that. And uh, no matter what you're majoring in, this class will no doubt transform you as an individual and will help you move forward in whatever capacity you want to. For example, if you want to be a doctor, you're going to be having patients of all different kinds of ethnic backgrounds. So this class will help give you the tools to have cultural competency and understanding for folks who might not look like you. Um, all right, let's move forward. So I do want to tell you a little bit about our materials and grading. Um, so our class will be 100% online. And so your instruction will include short videos like this. Um, you'll also have written discussions, written assignments. Um, reading is a huge part of this class. So make sure you designate at least one to two hours every week um, reading for this class. And you can use um, speech, you know, text to speech to listen to the text. You can read it in a traditional format but I recommend reading and taking notes and spending time doing that. That is the main form of studying for this class. Okay, I'll try not to speak so fast, um, but I will put captions on this video for you. Okay, of course we'll have a midterm in this class, which is a, basically a multiple choice test. And then on the second half of the semester, we're gonna have collaborative work, and I'm really excited about that. Okay, there is a book required for this class. It's called Mexicanos, A History of Mexicans in the United States. Uh, you should be able to pick that up from your school. If you haven't, um, please let me know. I can uh, give you access, I believe, to an online version, but uh, I do recommend picking it up from your library at school. So every week you'll be responsible for going on to Canvas uh, and this is where your schedule can come in and help you. If you have scheduled on Monday to check into this class, make sure you go on to Canvas, uh, read the updates, read um, the modules, announcements, and just be uh, a participant in our class. I also require that you get proper rest. Uh, I know as high school students, y'all like to stay up late sometimes. So I recommend uh, getting a full night's sleep. And you know, if, if you're too tired, you're not going to learn. So I recommend really checking in with yourself and making sure you know, you're taking care of you the best that you can. Otherwise, this class is gonna be a waste of time for you. Um, I also require that you communicate me, with me when you're facing any challenges. Uh, for example, if you're having a hard time uh, doing any kind of task or if you're facing a challenge with your family, please get in touch with me. Um, I'll be happy to help you as best as possible. I have a lot of resources um, in the community uh, for folks with, you know, hunger insecurity, who need rental assistance. I can get you in touch with people that can help you. So I do um, highly recommend communicating with me if there's something that is um, obstructing your learning because everybody deserves to learn. Okay, these are your assignments here. So you all are working towards um, 200 points in your class. So 30 of those points will be towards discussions, which are, will be weekly for the most part. 
20 points of those will be for a keywords assignment. And I'll, I'll explain what that is um, moving forward. Uh, 30 points will go to your indigenous art project. So that's going to be an art project that is inspired by some of the topics that we're going to talk about this semester. 30 points will be for uh, a book review. And then 90 points will be for project-based learning. That's the second half um, of this semester. So uh, there is a grades tab on Canvas and you can go in there and play around with it and see, you know, what if you got 80 out of 90 points on the final project or 20 out of 30 points on one of the assignments, um, what would your grade look like? And this is a great tool for helping you keep track of your grades on campus. Okay, so what will we be studying? A little bit more into that. So the first nine weeks, uh, we're going to be learning about what Chicano studies is, Chicanx studies, what that word means. And for now, um, one way to kind of wrap your head around it is to think of the word Chicano as Mexican Americans uh, with, you know, a political attitude. That's the way that we're going to define that word uh, moving forward in this class. But it's a whole philosophy and ideology behind the experience of Mexicans living in the United States and the long history uh, of Mexicans doing so, living in the United States and existing in the United States before the United States was actually known as the United States. Um, so we're going to learn about that foundational knowledge um, and we are going to prepare ourselves with information moving forward. So in the second half of the semester, we can focus in on one specific issue, one specific uh, problem, challenge uh, that has to do with Chicanos or Chicano studies. Uh, we're going to focus on identity, indigenous culture. So that word indigenous meaning native to the land. Uh, indigenous culture and resistance. We're going to learn about colonization, colonial history of the United States and Mexico, and also uh, the border and borderlands. What does it mean to live here uh, on the border? How is our experience different from anyone else in the United States because of that, especially uh, as Mexicanos, right? So in the last eight weeks, we're, we'll be doing more collaborative learning where, I, like I said, we're going to work on a project together. Um, Project-based learning is a really great way to attack a problem or an issue by um, studying it together as a class and asking a lot of questions um, and then kind of creating this like re research study out of that where um, in the end we get to show folks what we've learned about that specific problem or challenge or question. Uh, if you haven't heard of project-based learning before, I recommend checking it out like on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of great videos of examples of project-based learning. And for the most part, it, it benefits everybody in the sense that we're all working towards the solution to one question. And we're all um, able to read material that might be a little bit different than traditional college essays and chapters. And we're going to be learning from direct sources, primary sources, maybe uh, hearing from guest speakers uh, and really applying ourselves. I think that's really important. Um, you all have been taught at for so long. And so now's the time for you to take control of your education and think about what, what you wanna study and what you wanna know. That's really what's going to dictate uh, this second half of the semester. And I've done this before, it's turned out amazing. So I'll show you some examples of that. Okay, um, a little bit about me and then we'll continue moving on with class procedures. Um, like I said, my name is Professor Moreno and uh, I identify as a queer Chicana. So I'm third generation uh, Mexicana. So uh, my great great grandparents were born there. I also have indigenous ancestry, so I have some ancestors who are from a tribe in New Mexico. Um, I identify as uh, part of the LGBTQ community, so I hope if you yourself identify that way, you know that this is a safe place for you and that I'm always going to be bringing that perspective into what I teach. It's super, super important to think about, you know, how all of these identities intersect. Um, 
So what I've been researching throughout school has to do with immigrant rights activism, um, racial equality, racial justice. Um, I look at TV, film as um, cultural uh, sites of study. So that's something I write about as well. Um, I received my master's degree from the San Francisco Art Institute. And before that, I went to UCSD. I received my bachelor's degree in art history and theory there. And then um, from there, I, before that I transferred, um, I was at San Diego Mesa College. So I've kind of made a, a full circle. Uh, and now what I do is not only do I teach, but I'm also an active part of the community. Uh, I'm involved with multiple groups who uh, organize and work together for our most uh, oppressed and marginalized. Um, for example, I am part of a group called Armadillo Search and Rescue, which um, goes out into the desert and looks for people who have been reported missing um, in their journey to cross into the United States. Um, I'm also part of a group called We All We Got San Diego, which provides food every week um, to folks who have been suffering during the the pandemic during the quarantine. So I recommend um, looking at these groups and looking more into, you know, how a Chicano studies professor might, you know, uh, earn their living or might be involved in the community. Uh, I, I try to, you know, follow my interests and my passions to, you know, the best way possible. And I encourage you to do the same. Everyone's path looks so, so different. It's not just about picking a major. It's about create building your life around your interests, building your life around people and in service, you know, of the community. So that's something I'll share with um, more moving forward as well. Okay, so about class procedures, I'm going to have you all read through this on your own. I just wanted to remind you that there are no set meeting times. So we're not going to be zooming in this class. Um, Unless that's something that you all really want to do, and then we can maybe do it periodically, maybe once a month. Um, each each week, uh, you'll you'll have you'll have these uh, four things. You'll have a reading to read each week. Um, you will have a video like this and slides to learn off of. So that's like that's your class time. And then the third thing is um, a discussion. You will have a discussion to respond to, to um, comment on your other peers' uh, comments, so discussion. And then the fourth thing is um, participation. So this week I'm asking you to turn in your notes from the reading and that will count towards your participation grade. Um, so those are the four things that you will be responsible for every week, reading, watching the video and looking at the slides, um, discussion, and participation. Some weeks you will have an assignment. Uh, like I mentioned in the grading portion, you will have um, some assignments to turn, in, to, to turn in. And then at the end of the semester, we'll be in groups and collaborating a little bit more. So it might look a little bit different, but for now, reading, videos, discussion, and participation, those are the four things. Uh, to to worry about. Okay, I think what I'll do now is uh, share with you the uh, Canvas page just so you're familiar with where exactly you're going on Canvas. For some of you, it's your first time on Canvas, so I think that um, it helps to to just uh, get an example of what you should be looking at. The slides for this week, I'll be um, posting shortly after this video. And you can always comment um, on the page and ask more questions about the slides. The slides will hold your keywords. So make sure to take notes of the keywords because I will be giving you a keywords worksheet in a couple weeks and that will be where you put down what you've learned about those keywords. Okay, so now you're looking at our homepage, and this is just a quick introduction. I included this picture because it's so inspiring to me. Um, this is a young brown beret. Brown berets uh, are 
a part of the community and have been for 50 years uh, where they help kind of protect the community during protests or actions and in general, you know, do, do good for the community. Um, so Brown Berets were modeled after the Black Panthers. And so you have this like wonderfully powerful Chicana who's in the middle of her community uh, advocating for what she needs and what will make their life better, right? So that's why I put Chicanx equals power, Chicanx equals self-determination. These are the things that we'll be speaking about throughout the semester. Um, so here are buttons that you can click on to get to anywhere throughout the semester. Um, I label them in terms of importance. So syllabus, of course, make sure you understand and read that. Modules, this is the part where, where you'll probably go to the most. Uh, in the modules page, actually, let me go back here. So the modules is where you'll want to go to see anything that I upload. So um, after recording this video, you'll have 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Uh, and you want to follow the modules from top to bottom. So you'll click on this. You'll read through what I've posted here, take notes, uh, and then you click next to move on to the next item in the module. And then sometimes there will be pictures. Um, for this one, I included the reading here at the bottom. So I recommend printing out the readings, but you can read it on the screen if you'd like. But printing out the readings will give you an edge in terms of really understanding uh, what's being taught, which means that you'll be on your way to getting an A. So I recommend, if at all possible, printing the readings. You can print two to a page to make it so you don't print as many pages, um, whatever you want. But this is a really good practice for moving on uh, in college. Okay, another one to look at is the discussion board. So if you are having a question, um, I recommend putting it in the Q&A forum. That way another student can help you answer it. Uh, you can send me an email, of course, but it's better to post it in the Q&A forum so that other students see what the question is and you know what might be helpful for other students. So sometimes when you email me, I'll tell you, thanks for your question, please put it in a Q&A forum. And this is what I'm referring to here. Student services help is, you know, if you need um, help uh, reaching out to any student services, you know, in college, we have all kinds of different departments to help you out, no matter if you're a first generation college student, uh, if you are, what that means is that your parents or grandparents haven't gone to college. That means that you are a first generation college student. Um, or if you have a disability or a learning uh, disability, um, we can help you with that too. And you can post about that here or send me an email. Uh, so there's all kinds of student services we can offer you. Um, our school has a food drive. You can come by and get some groceries. Um, and so this page will fill up with discussions as we move along. And the one for this week is to introduce uh, yourself to others through a video. And I'll be posting that shortly. Okay, so those are kind of the main things to look at for now. I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, so I'm going to end this video here. It's been long enough. Uh, so what I'll do next is upload the slides and make sure to read through those, read through my notes. This week we are reading a chapter from this book. and. Uh, why I started with this book is because we are wanting to learn from the indigenous perspective first. So we can't um, research and learn about the United States and United States history without first learning about indigenous people and the native people of this land. So that's what we're doing is we're reading, um, you know, what, what does it mean for, you know, this, this idea of Columbus discovering America to persist, you know, in our culture. Is that true? Is it not true? What are some of the myths? What are some of the lies that have been told um, to us about United States history? And how can we learn, you know, what the, what the truths are and what the stories are uh, from people who existed on 
this land thousands and thousands of years before the formation of the United States. So this is a perspective that you might not have heard before in your classes. And that's because um, in high school, there's sometimes only one way to teach something, one way a story is told. Um, and in this class, there's many different ways stories are told. And this way is significant because this way has been, uh, you know, hidden or disguised uh, from us for a very long time. And so now we have indigenous scholars, native people writing their own histories and we can learn about them. And I think that's a really exciting thing moving forward. So you can look forward to that in this class, learning a bunch of new things that you might have thought you'd known that you actually, you know, don't know the entire truth on. So I'm really looking forward to that and to uh, looking at your discussion this week and your notes from this week. So thank you so much. And I hope you all have a good first week of school. Remember to be patient with yourselves, take breaks, and I'm here to help you moving forward. I think that we all just can grow in our discomfort and we can really be there for each other. It's really important at this time. So thank you guys, have a good day.